Hello YouTube and welcome to another episode of CGL's New Jersey Collectibles. I'm really excited because this is a part one of part two. A uh, little road trip that we did with a friend and fellow subscriber to the channel, uh, Greg. Uh, you guys are going to meet him in the video. Super awesome guy. Super knowledgeable about the hobby of comic book collecting and buying and selling. And uh, I learned a lot just from watching him this entire video. You guys will see what I'm talking about as we get into it. But yeah, this was a really fun trip. So in this two-part video, um, you know, we're going to hit three different stops. Two of them will be in this video, and then the next one's a surprise for the, the part two. But in this video, we're going to Columbus Flea Market, uh, which we didn't have the best experience, and we'll explain why in the video. And then we're going to Ron's Comic World in Mount Holly, New Jersey. All I can say is, wow, Ron's has an amazing world of comics. It was, it was so, so cool. Um, and we only got to see, like, I want to say, like, about... Uh, two thirds of it because he had dozens of boxes that had yet to have been processed and gone through so we weren't allowed to dig through those yet unfortunately but um, the stuff that he had was just amazing 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 so uh, two overall good experiences Columbus we kind of screwed that up a little bit but that's okay um, but yeah two great experiences uh, got some cool stuff I, I really encourage you guys to make sure you watch the video but then also watch the recap at the end because 99% of what was bought today was bought by dad and that you guys know that that's kind of a little off camera like you, I don't always capture what dad's buying but we're gonna go through it I got um, I'd say a, a nice stack of comic books and and some other little odd and end stuff too to go through at the end but let me know what you guys think uh, let me know what you think of the whole experience and uh, yeah I'm really excited to show you guys part two also because I got a really a really awesome holy grail piece for myself uh, that I don't know if I'm ever going to sell it, but yeah, it's so cool. But this one, part one, found a lot of really cool stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll get into it. Enjoy. And uh, I'll catch you guys later. See ya. Good morning, YouTube. Uh, I'm here with a friend and supporter of the channel, Greg. Uh, we're on our way to Columbus Flea Market, and we have a pretty uh, adventurous day ahead of us. What, what are, what's the rest of the plans after we hit the flea market? Got, got a bunch of uh, comic book stores down in South Jersey. Um, Ron's Comic World in Mount Holly, uh, Panther and Cherry Hill, and a few others down by there. And uh, everybody's jumping on the turnpike to go to New York City Comic Con. We're jumping on the turnpike <laughs> to go the opposite way. Let's see who does better. I think we're going to do good today. I think we have a pretty good trip ahead of us. Uh, have you been to any of these stores? I have, but not in like two years. Okay. And so every time, every time I've been, it was great. Like I spent like six hours there. Awesome. So yeah. Dad and I, it's going to be our first time going to a lot of these places. Uh, Never Columbus. the flea market though. Yeah, Columbus, we, it's been a while since we've been there. We've it's been a couple thing. of years. Been there yeah. a while. But uh, yeah, we're going to hit the road and we're in for a long day. So you guys are going to get plenty of footage in this video. See you guys. So we're here at Columbus Flea Market. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't a great day for us to go. And I'll explain that once we get outside. But uh, as you can see, they have an indoor section to the flea market. There's also an outdoor section. So it's pretty big when it's running at full capacity. Uh, I guess I'll tell you guys right now, it wasn't running at full capacity. Unfortunately, we went on a Saturday. I thought that would have been a good day to go. But other people told us that Thursday or Sunday is a better day to go because more vendors are there. So it wasn't, um, it wasn't huge. You remember that guy with the toy store that you could barely walk into? Uh, yeah, I'm wondering if he's still here. Do you have comics too, or just? I we, who knows what was in there? Yeah, he <laughs> couldn't even. Weird, like he would open the door, he would dig out like a little path to go in. It was floor to ceiling. It was just. And then the last time I was here, he wasn't here. It was just full of toys. It was just full of toys. So you just had to dig through. Yeah. I mean, it was like you know, and then he like didn't really want to sell anything. A couple of things. Oh. It's a box. Yes. Uh, and you can see like here's some Spider-Man toys, 20 bucks or 15 bucks. So we poked around a couple spots, not seeing anything great until we finally come to this little stand. It's just this little hole in the wall uh, stop here. And obviously we see comic books. Um, I see trading cards. I even see a Yu-Gi-Oh uh, uh, folder. Um, what's it called? Case that I'm going to go and check out. And um, yeah, so it, it, honestly, it was kind of a weird stand. Um, I couldn't really get a vibe as to what was going on. They were definitely more into the trading cards than they were into the comics. Um, there are a lot of good deals in here. Guys, let us know if we passed up on anything. But it's kind of hard to say we passed up on anything when Greg was with us because Greg was using this. Um, he was using this app 
called Key Collector Comics, uh, KCC. And it was an amazing, uh, it was an amazing app from what I was seeing him do because I could really see how you can use it to your advantage. Um, he said that he pays for a subscription. It's nineteen ninety nine for for the whole year to use the app, and um, basically he can look up any comic book he wants. He can see any key appearance or any key significance to the book, um, any information on it. He can even find the prices as to what they go for it depending on condition as well as keep track of his entire collection so that's really awesome and yeah I, I learned a lot from watching him Now, I always get excited when I start flipping through Yu-Gi-Oh cards, especially these because these are legit. These are not fakes like I see at the flea market all the time. These are real um, authentic Yu-Gi-Oh cards, and they're the original ones. They're like the old ones from the uh, late 90s or early 2000s, which is what I collect. Um, I understand that if you're not a Yu-Gi-Oh collector or you, you're – I'm not – I can't even really call myself a Yu-Gi-Oh collector because I'm a very specific type of collector. I only want cards that relate to my childhood. That's really it. That's why I collect them. I don't try to collect every card. I don't care about what's the most valuable or anything like that. Uh, I just only want cards that really grab my attention. And I always get excited when I flip through books like this because this is my era. These are my cards. And right here, I just I find my favorite one. This is the Dark Magician. It's probably the most famous monster in Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, it's, it's not in, in great condition, but I don't care. Um, if he's going to give me a decent price for it, and what I say decent would be anything less than $5, I'll pay for it. Um, because of the condition, because it is a, a little rough, I don't want to pay overpay for it. But yeah, I I love flipping through these Yu-Gi-Oh cards, and you 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 see Pokemon and other stuff a lot more than you see the Yu-Gi-Oh. And a lot of times when you do see Yu-Gi-Oh, it's not my era. So this is so cool to see. I wish I could buy them all. I don't know where you'd be on this Dark Magician if you want to look that up. It's a little. It's got like some corner wear and stuff like that. But I'd be curious. Be interested in that one. That's childhood memories right there. Oh, we're getting pricey. We're getting pricey. Two bucks, I'll take it for that.
mean, when I just got back in and collecting, if I didn't have my key on the slicer and the look up books, I would be. And I still, now, you know, four years later, I still don't have a, I still have to go back because there's so many hands. Right. I don't really read this way. Yeah. Stuff. There's no way you can remember it all. I'll put this on. I mean, these are all... Oh, oh, yeah, most of them. Right, so I'm okay, they're not, so they're not all 99 cents. I just grabbed whatever white boxes I could from the store. Gotcha. You guys have a store somewhere close by? Yeah, in Robinsville. We have a full-size location. What's the name? Uh, Cars to go. In the talk store shop. <laughs> Chris, you see this? Yeah, I saw that. It's just a little too rough. We do like 15 for the pair. I know it's both. I want to be able to. They're lowest verified on the TCG player. Okay. I'll take it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna walk away from it. Yeah, honestly, wasn't thrilled about that transaction, and it just kind of put a little damper on the fact that I got these. Two really cool cards. I'm really excited excited about that Trihorn Dragon. I paid fifteen dollars for it because I know it's a rare card. It's an LOB. Um, that's uh, that's a good thing. And I never owned one before, and it's in nice condition. So, uh, you know, I don't really like to spend more than twenty bucks on a card, but that one's really nice, and uh, it's one I don't have and one I've wanted for a while. So I got it. But that whole, you know, can can you do fifteen instead of seventeen? And he's like, No, I'm already giving you the lowest price I can. It's like. And then I got hit with a tax afterwards. I was kind of like, on the transaction, I was kind of like, uh, you know, put a little damper on it. But here we go. Here's Greg in action. Um, you see he has his phone right by his side. Uh, this way he can look up any comic that he wants. Just by typing in the title and, and finding it, um, can pull up any issue. And it shows him the significance of everything about every book. So it's super cool. And, and like I said, it also gives him an appraisal as to what the book is worth based on condition, um, based off of recent sale prices. So you can t stay totally up to date with everything. Uh, once again, it's called Key, Co uh, Key Collector Comics, KCC. Um, yeah, and he's also told me that it, it updates you on news or anything that's going on in the comic book world. So a really cool app, and seeing him here in action, just kind of rifling through books, finding good stuff is, is pretty cool. got a new Jeep and he said new cars are like going for ten thousand over like the sticker price for a really? premium. Yeah. Do you know he got a new Jeep it cost it cost him like fifty five thousand dollars for a new Jeep. Well, I got a Range Rover in two thousand nine for fifty five thousand. Exactly. That's what my sister drives. So that that's where the big bump came. And like you said, that all these have books back here. Yeah. You got some more books? You comic book? Uh, yeah. That's why 
I haven't brought it out yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, How much for these two? Uh, five dollars. I'll take it. So yeah, unfortunately, going on a Saturday to Columbus Flea Market is not recommended because there are just is not a lot of vendors there. There's probably it was probably about ten percent of the normal vendors that normally show up to the flea market here uh, today. So we really didn't get a good experience at all as far as just as far as volumes concerned. I mean, we just didn't get to see anybody. Um, this was like one of the lone boxes that was there. Greg picked through the whole thing, didn't find a single book in there, even with his um, his super app uh, telling him anything about anything that's worth it. Um, he couldn't find anything in here that was that was worth a, a dollar even. So yeah, it was it was kind of a rough day. There there are some cool stuff uh, books coming up later on, but a little rough there. And then we ended up finding this uh, car guy, and I actually found some some cool stuff here. I was surprised that it was uh, that the stuff that I found was still here, even. Even though this guy probably shows up every week to the flea market. Oh, that car, that looked like a, um, that looked like a McLaren or something, yeah. 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 That guy was flying. The new Corvettes, you can't even tell sometimes. That's what I said. Just curious what you're asking on this. Eight? Yes, sir. Good deal. That's just a corgi. Oh, that's the right? full size one. That's the bigger one. Yeah. yeah. It still pop open. I don't know. Check it out. And then how about the uh, DeLorean? Three bucks. Three bucks. You want to do 10 for both instead of 11? It's good. Finally, after we walked around the whole flea market, we actually found a, a pretty good collectibles guy. He had tons of comics and toys. Unfortunately for me, there was n nothing, and I mean almost nothing. There was I did pull out one book. There was just nothing here that really grabbed my attention. There was nothing that I really liked to buy or collect or anything like that. Um, and that's as far as the comics are concerned. As far as the toys are concerned, he did have some cool toys, like some cool 90s Star Wars and X-Men toys that... I would at least look at, but his prices were so ridiculously high on these. You guys will see it as I walk around. Um, uh, loose loose X-Men figures that go for anywhere between $1 and $5 he had for 15 bucks, you know, in, in bags. So uh, Greg ended up buying a couple things here and actually talked the guy down pretty significantly on the good price. Um, and like, like, you know, I said with his, before with his app, he was able to find some good books. Uh, but for me, going appless, uh, yeah, it was kind of hard to find a good deal here. All right, guys, this was our second stop of the day. Uh, this was uh, Ron's Comic World in Mount Holly, New Jersey. Guys, what an amazing shop. Um, great people working there, knowledgeable people, passionate about the hobby. Uh, Ron's been in it for decades. Uh, he's, he's survived the, the highs and the lows, and he's come out uh, pretty good. Um, we, we didn't even get to see really a, a good chunk of what this store had to offer because he, he had just bought a huge collection that hadn't even been processed yet. So unfortunately, we didn't get to see everything. But yeah, I, I mean, 
this 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 store had amazing vintage selection. I mean, I, I definitely you could see all those boxes to the left over there. Greg's going through some right now. I go through uh, pretty much all of them. I'll show you guys some of my favorite books. I really hope you enjoy uh, going through these books as as much as I did. Um, but yeah, super fun stuff, super cool. Uh, Ron did give us a deal on some stuff, and Dad actually bought most of the comics in this video. So be sure to watch to the end, guys, because I did not make a ton of purchases in this entire video, but Dad made a ton, so that'll all get recapped at the end. Um, for, so you guys can see what we bought and I can tell you dad ended up spending about hundred and ten dollars on the in this shop and they took off um, I want to say they took off like a le ten or, or twelve dollars I think the total was like hundred twenty two or something and they made it 110 so uh, that was super generous you know you don't have to uh, expect that you're always gonna get prices off interesting what Ron's strategy was we got to talk to the owner um, he said that he was a little more flexible selling his lower grade books and just cheap books that, eh, you know, he probably doesn't really want, he said. But when it comes to the higher grade stuff, when it comes to the more desirable key issues, I'm not going to be as flexible on the prices because I'd rather just hold on to the books. I can totally respect that. I agree with that. And, uh, yeah, that's his that's his uh, buying and selling strategy. And I think that's that's pretty smart to hold on to, to all the good stuff. And if you, if you want to... And negotiate on dollar comics, you know, he's more Silver open age, to that. Yeah. Like private schools, Catholic schools, uh, obviously museum curators and things like that, but no one ever mentioned that. Community college. Not me. Community college is specialty uh, research. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a great thing. Now, strange sales. Work in that and here one. it's it does it like but, uh, colleges one oh wow. Uh, 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 so like they have the labeling on there, that helps me. I'm surprised these don't sell for more, the Submariner Hulk yeah. books. I love them. I'll buy them for cheap if they if I can ever find them. But they don't sell very well. Awesome. How was that trip overall? You'd say just... I just got this. This one's much nicer, though. It was. I don't know if it was worth the the drive. You know, um, I drove two hours, mm -hmm. like each way. So. The guy, um, Eddie, he has a YouTube channel, Erod212. Yeah. He's been out, like, well, he, he re retired recently, so the past couple of months he's been traveling to other states. Okay. Just for the sake of hunting books and yeah. making some content along the way. Yeah. And he's just been saying his overall consensus was there's more deals to be found outside of the New Jersey area because it's just so competitive here. It's true. But you know what? Like, coming down here to South Jersey is... It's different. It's different. It's, it's just better. different. It's a whole other world here. It's better. That's why. I mean, it is. It's awesome. Yeah. Dad's gonna like this box. You know, you just got. It. Did you just buy this one? Yeah. 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 But I mean, it's uh, it's just, it's just different. Down here. Uh, these are moderate price range. The more expensive are in these boxes here, okay. or of course up on the shelf. Gotcha. Cool, thank you. And if we have like a big pile, will you work with us a little bit? That's the guy in the brown with the long okay. sleeve. Let me get the pile first. Yes, yes. Thank you. I understand what you're saying. Daredevil 11. It's cool. I just got 10. Avengers 88. Phantom Eagle. I never even heard of Phantom Eagle. I love these um, hip hop variants on the modern books. Yeah, it's cool. cool.
Yeah, we can play any part, you know, whatever format. Next three months, go. You gotta have a thing to say about that. No more rules. Uh, go. Better than what they did. Well, bad No, no. Flash versus Flash. Flash wins. I didn't say rules for the 30th anniversary of Tyler. I just got this from Mark. Nice. How much did you pay for it? Mark, I paid, I want to say 45 It was in pretty nice shape. First Lord Death, I just got this from the outside. But this is in much better condition. It's awesome. I got this too. It's not a key. It's 10 bucks. You definitely have more books this time, like older books. Yeah. But it's been two years. Oh, this is a great selection. Yeah. Must have, I mean, a lot of this looks like it might have all come out of one collection, maybe. Probably. I love the giant songs. I know, those are cool. I'm trying to. I yeah. came here saying I want to save money for Comic Con, yeah. but if the right stuff comes along, and this is some pretty good stuff, and they said this is better. I know. I, mean, I want to get into there. I know. I'm trying to represent. They're good for you. Oh yeah, you sent me that book. Yeah, that was good. You can get it for like twenty. We do have the Loki. It's in here. Hulk. You know Hulk, right? Yeah. Which ones are good? Mm -hmm. it, oh, I know this is an early one. Yeah. The Hulk ones are they're tough. It's a beauty. Oh wow. You were just looking at that one, weren't you? Yeah. The first Mac. Rather that one, the um, that's we were looking uh, upgrade. Yeah. yeah. What number is that? Nineteen, I think. Yeah. Second Mandarin. Oh, that's cool. I just got that for ten dollars. Second Nova. Second Nova. Oh, this is terribly sorted. Uh, all of this stuff, all this stuff underneath, uh -huh. and half of the stuff over there, has all come in within the last six weeks. Awesome, uh, awesome. Yeah. We like it like this, just digging, <laughs> yeah. digging through everything. It's if great. We, if we have like a big pile, we work with us a little bit on the price. Right. I said if I get like a big pile, we work with you a little bit on the price. It depends on what it is. I mean, all this stuff has okay, cool, been up here for Tell me where you're like going. three weeks. Yeah. I'll get so, a ride there. I'll wait an hour on the side of the road. Yeah. Uh, get there to the place where they drop off. I'm less likely to work with it. Right. Knock on the door. Yeah. Call the business. Cool. Thank you. We'll see right. what it looks like when I'm done. All right. Appreciate it. <laughs> That's cool. I guess right place, right time. Yeah. Oh, this is a cool book. It's first Silver Age Plastic Man. Plastic Man one. That's cool. So everything came in the last six weeks. I don't care. Give me to a shop. Give me to a shop. You can drop me off to a shop. Get that sorted. I didn't even know there was stuff underneath. Yeah, I know, right? I'm pretty good. No. The owner here buys a lot of collections. He's bought six or seven collections in the last six months. We just talked to him. Yep. So some of the stuff we have up here, like first ever appearance, uh, Bad Girl. That's an amazing book. Yep. That's cool. We've got First Blade. Very nice. Very nice. First shocker. Hi, I'm 
Is this the Silver Samurai, like Wolverine Silver Silver Samurai? Yeah. Interesting. That's hmm. first appearance. I, th I think they will. I think it's a matter of how long it's going to take to get another supplier. Because yeah. the set is a 
print to demand. Yeah, right. Track. Another <laughs> one was also quoted with being print to demand. Was this? Okay. And it's still in there. Okay, good. Uh, print to demand basically is we will print it as long as the demand is there. Yeah, no. My concern is yeah. <laughs> that given that it's now flying out of the store, we only do a. That's it. You get you got. They run the price on. They wouldn't do that because they're, they're going to make the same amount no matter what. The stores are the ones that make the extra buck by having the short of supply, not wizards. Wizards. Okay. If, well, they do if they say the print is done and then the supply. The, no. Wizards probably always makes the same amount because the money goes from wizards. The distributor, and we give the distributor our money. And no. wizards, yeah, Wizards isn't going to make more money by shortening the supply. Unless they're they only a gold edge coil. Yeah, they're only okay. They're only hurting themselves. Right. Well, again, yeah, and like, and Warhammer. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, you're right. Because, because of War Masters. Because if War yeah, if Warhammer is making a cut, which yes, yeah, they are making yeah. about a dollar cut. Um, they're going to be wired. Right, right, right. The fact that they're wired. Right, right. The fact that they're wired. 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 The Complicated for you gentlemen, but <laughs> if you're looking for, for instance, some recent variants, mm -hmm. there are some here on the counter. Okay. The most recent, and then there's a shelf here of recent, right here. Awesome. Of recent variants. Very like cool. One in 25s, one in 10s. Thank you. Oh yeah, there's a lot of good stuff. All right, guys, so we are back after an amazing day, a long day for sure. We spent several hours uh, on the road today, probably upwards of five or six. Um, first thing I'm going to go through is actually a gift that I have not even seen yet. It is a care package from Greg. Um, he said that these were mostly gifts for Dad. It might be kind of comics that he's into. And, uh, yeah, we're always really appreciative anytime somebody uh, gives us something, even if it's just something, uh, you know, 
a 10 cent comic it, it means so much more than than just the price um the these gifts that you guys uh provide us are are really awesome so let's see what we got here it's mickey and goofy tweety and sylvester got, got a Hanna barbera comic there i love that Bugs Bunny, probably my favorite cartoon. It's kind of hard to top that. Hecklin' Jekyll. One of Dad's favorites, absolutely. Richie Rich. Moby Duck. This one's kind of unique. Classic Illustrated Junior, The Donkey's Tale, like that. Life with Archie. Uh, what else? Some laugh. Pep. Archie and me. Here's another laugh. Life with Archie. of Archie and Me's. Archie's TV Laugh Out and a Reggie and Me. So thank you, Greg. That's really awesome. I'm sure Dad is going to love these. We, he still hasn't seen these yet, so uh, that's, that's pretty cool. And uh, all right, so we'll start with the Columbus Flea Market. As you guys can tell from watching the video, um, Columbus Flea Market is an in and outdoor flea market. They have some pretty cool stuff. The problem that we ran into, as I explained, is that we went kind of on the wrong day. We went on a Saturday, which to me, you know, I always go to my, my flea market on a Saturday, so that's a good flea market day for me. Apparently, it's not the day to go for Columbus. Uh, you want to go on either a Thursday or a Sunday, I believe, were, were the days that people had recommended us go. And so we'll be back there another day. But um, yeah, unfortunately, we didn't get the full experience. Um, so this first purchase came from the indoor booth the first booth that we stopped at i was really really psyched to get these cards and i'll explain why uh i was not so thrilled with the transaction and i'll explain that as well but um yeah so a two Yu-Gi-Oh cards you guys know um those of you that have been on the channel for a while i'm not into pokemon i'm not really into uh trading cards too much but i love Yu-Gi-Oh because this is my childhood and this is my favorite card from being a kid is the dark magician and so with all these Yu-Gi-Oh cards, I don't know if you guys, if the camera is going to focus in on that, but um, you always have these numbers right here. And this kind of, it basically indicates the addition of the card uh, in a way. It tells you that, that those numbers there indicate the year it was made and um, what set it was a part of. And you can do the math from there and kind of go back and trace uh, where this card originated from. So Dark Magician, iconic, probably the most iconic monster in Yu-Gi-Oh!, and then this one, kind of less lesser known from the show, but a really iconic monster, Trihorn Dragon. This is the LOB zero 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 version, so that's a good thing. That's really awesome. That lets me know it's it's one of the original cards that was made. And first time I ever bought one of these and added to my collection. So super thrilled. So guy gave me a great price, two dollars on this card because it does have some does have some pretty significant damage. I don't care about that because I'm not trying to resell these or anything. I just want to collect them. I, I have like a dozen Dark Magician cards and anytime I see it, I'm going to buy it. I just want to collect all of the Dark Magician. I want to have, I want to be the Dark Magician King and have them all. Um, but $2 for this, he said, and then $15 for this. Uh, I asked him if he could do $15 for both and he was like, no, I can't do that. And honestly, I wasn't going to walk away from both these cards because the, they were good prices, but it was just like, you couldn't give me like just the extra two bucks off. And then I got hit with a tax after, after we negotiated, after he said the $17, then he said it's like the total was like whatever, 18 or 19 and change. So because of sales tax. And so I just wasn't thrilled with that transaction. Don't know uh, how to feel about that exactly, but I was super thrilled to find original Yu-Gi-Oh cards. So I, I can't complain too much. These don't, you don't see these too often. So that, that was really cool. From the same guy, and this was more dad's purchase, but I threw a couple of these comics in here. We got a little stack of comics and he had some pretty good stuff at really good prices. The guy didn't strike me as a huge comic book guy, or maybe he is and he, he's, maybe he's like me and he just buys mostly the older stuff. But 
and he's not too familiar with the newer stuff. But Greg, you guys can see in the video, Greg was going hard on these boxes and finding some good stuff. Um, so this is all the stuff that Dad ended up pulling out, and some of this um, he swapped with Greg. Um, and just really good prices, you know, kind of uh, anywhere from a dollar to three dollars. I think he spent on some of these, and these comics are worth every bit of that. It's a nice Avengers comic. Firestorm. The weasel. It doesn't look like a weasel. It looks like a panther mixed with a rat, but not a weasel. <laughs> Another Firestorm. Oh, here he is again. The weasel. I wonder if any of those is the first appearance. Pop goes the weasel. Uh, Shazam. Kind of old man Shazam there. Pretty nice Iron Man comic there. I pulled this out because it was really old and for a buck. Um, I figured, I didn't know if Dad actually wanted it or not, but he ended up buying it. It's a 10 cent Archie. I don't know if that means anything. I just just like, ooh, 10 cents and it's a dollar. So Dad might like this. And then this one was really cool. I, I mean, if you guys need any Amazing Spider-Man 378, you got to stop by the booth at the at the Columbus Flea Market because this guy had like two dozen of them, all of them for two bucks a piece. I could have bought more, but I was, you know, I, I was saving my cash because we had such a long day ahead of us that, uh, yeah, but Greg, I think, got a couple of these and I got one and uh, it's a really cool book. I, I've bought this book several times in the past, I think on this channel as well. But yeah, I, I love this comic. All right, so that was that. Um, pretty good first stop. I mean, we were we were, we were rolling because we were like, all right, this is the first bit stand. We stopped at a couple other little stores in there, and then we got outside, and there was nothing, and we were so disappointed. It was like, ah, dang, we, we came on the wrong day. Dad did end up buying these records. I didn't even see him buy these, so um, everybody knows this. Orson Welles, War of the Worlds. I say everybody. A lot of people probably don't know what this is, but this was a real radio broadcast from the 40s, I believe. Uh, I want to say it's the 40s, and people actually thought from this radio broadcast that, because they were just telling the story, Orson Welles, War of the World, they were just telling the story over the radio. Oh, here it is, 1938, okay. Um, and people actually thought that aliens were coming down and taking over the world, and, and there's like stories, guys, of people that killed themselves because they thought that this radio broadcast was real. Um, so, so much history goes into that. It's awesome. It's awesome. Uh, you can see it. I guess this is a newspaper headline, maybe, from, from the Times, but fake radio war stirs terror. <laughs> it's like, that's crazy. It's awesome, but it just goes to show, like, wow, it, it's it's... It's a crazy world. And then he also got a Partridge Family Sound Magazine. Interesting. I didn't even see him buy these. And then I ended up getting this book at one of the last booths we stopped at. Um, J2 number four. I'm a big juggernaut guy. J2, I'm not too big into J2, but I like this book because it was a crossover cover. And so that's pretty cool. J2 versus juggernaut. You can really see the size difference there. Um, this guy had a lot of good books that Greg was able to find because Greg was using this app that kind of gave him all the details on all the books. So it was really cool to see. Um, me personally, there just wasn't anything like, you know, I kind of buy, I kind of buy more off of what I love. And so there wasn't anything that I really liked besides this book. He did have some action figures that were like loose X-Men figures that he was asking like 15 bucks for. I don't know if I talked him down to five bucks, I'd still feel like I was overpaying for some of that stuff. So prices were crazy at this guy's stand, but Greg was able to find a, a nice pile of books and negotiate actually. He actually got a pretty decent percentage off. I want to say he paid close to half off everything, maybe even a little better than that. Um, but yeah, for me, there, there wasn't too much there that I was really gravitating towards. So I kind of um got that book and i was happy to pay the two bucks for because i thought it was cool um this guy's stand that i stopped at i wish he had more stuff because i would have bought more of it but um he had a jimmy rogers book old country singer folk singer he had a hank williams book who i've gotten into hank williams uh deeply over the past six months I'm, i was an old blues guy and i didn't really pay too much attention to country and now i'm getting into the old guys and yeah hank williams is definitely my favorite of, of the the older guys so love sick blues the life of hank williams that's kind of cool 
Um, I think I paid five bucks for these two books. And then we went to another guy's stand. And this was definitely the coolest thing that I got, the, at least the coolest purchase, was um, the DeLorean Hot Wheels combined with the Corgi James Bond Lotus. And I mean, this is a cool toy. Still works, so everything pops out. I, it is supposed to come with missiles, and you know, these toys are so detailed. It looks like the firing mechanism will still work. Um, I've owned I've owned the smaller version of this, like uh, uh, close to a dozen, but look at how it folds up. That's so cool. But I've never owned this uh, actually bigger one. It could definitely use some cleaning up. I think we can even just hit this with just kind of uh, a little cleaner, and it'll it'll present a little nicer. Um, and I en ended up paying ten bucks for both of these things, which I thought was a great deal. Um, I don't know what these actually go for, but I thought it was a really good deal. It was worth every penny, in my opinion, and I just love doing this. <laughs> that's worth the eight bucks right there for it. Uh, yeah, that's super cool. I want to say that this came out in seventy four seventy five, but uh, don't quote me on that. But yeah, super cool toys. And so uh, overall, considering that we went on a quote-unquote bad day uh we got some pretty cool stuff so now let's check out what we got from ron's world ron's comic world all right guys so now we're moving on to our stop at ron's comic world and like i said many times it's just an awesome shop i hope you guys enjoyed uh getting to go through all those books as much as i did it was really fun it, there were some books and titles that i'd never seen in person before and i was just like "Ooh, that that's cool that's interesting um even if they weren't super valuable it was just cool to go through so many uh, awesome books and like i said we didn't even get to go through all of it because he had a huge new collection that wasn't even fully processed so go to ron I, I he we talked to the guy afterwards he's always buying he's always bringing in new stuff and and so it's he always tries to keep fresh inventory so it's really awesome it was ron's comic world in mount holly new jersey i believe was the the town and so uh, i did throw some books into here but this is once again mostly dad's purchase um he ended up spending, I believe, $110 on all these books. So some of these, these unbagged and boarded, and some of them are bagged and not boarded. These were all dollar comics. Um, we talked to the owner, Ron, asked him if he was willing to work with us on price at all, especially uh, Greg had an, uh, a stack of his own that he was uh, trying to negotiate. And Ron was pretty cool with... Um, uh, making deals on some of the lesser valuable stuff. But as he explained, he's like, if I have something that's high value, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not looking to give it away. He's definitely does not have a problem sitting back on his, on his better books, uh, which I admire in a person. I think that's a pretty good strategy, especially when you have your own retail store, you know, you don't, you don't, you're, you're not pressured to hopefully not pressured to sell. And, um, yeah, so he's he's a little bit more hesitant to let the the good books go, and I think that's a smart strategy. Um, but yeah, so was able to negotiate a pretty good price. I think because I think Dad said he ended up taking like around ten percent off this purchase, um, which isn't much, but it's something. You know, it's definitely something. It's definitely uh, better than than nothing. So can't complain there. Just want to be careful. Some of these bags are a little sticky. I don't want to put them on the comics that don't have bags and boards. All right, let me let me just move this this stack over here. So yeah, these commandy books here, these are all still dollar comics. As you can see, they're not priced. We got commandy that was fifty one. This fifty three, fifty four. And yeah, uh, I definitely agree. If anybody's thinking it, I'll, I'll back it up that I did not make a ton of purchases in this video. And that's because, uh, you know, I was trying to take a, a cal I was trying to make a calculated buy and I didn't see anything that was really grabbing my attention. Um, well, I did see a lot of things that grabbed my attention, but nothing that really wowed me. Um, I do have a wow me item coming up in part two of this video. I, I will give a little spoiler that it's not a comic book. But it is something that, because you guys know, I, I buy more than just comics. Um, but it is a pretty pretty rare, um, you don't see too often, uh, very sought after Marvel 
ac vintage action figure. And so I, that's all I'm going to tell you. Um, you have to watch part two to see what it is. But I was super thrilled to get that. So that was my big purchase on this trip. Um, but like I said, I did throw a couple of books. And I think I threw like two or three books into this pile of dads and just let him pay for it. <laughs> that's certainly easier. Um, yeah, and these are all still dollar books. We're still going here on this. Commandy 38 and 37 all right so that, those i believe were all the dollar books now we'll get into uh some of the better stuff that dad ended up finding there was no shortage of books to find believe me so here's one we'll just kick it off with uh shazam uh his clash with black adam super cool uh pretty it's a little rough but it's pretty solid a teen titans number six and i know that this is a really early beast boy i think this is beast boy before he becomes a member of the teen titans somebody correct me if i'm wrong there it's a super cool picture though um he's kind of like gorilla snake interesting uh flash 163 interesting uh a couple of these adam books so we got 25 24, 17, 18, and 15. And then we even got another bag here. It looks like there's another combination of dollar books and, and more stuff. Let's see. Going back to the commandies here. 24, 44. Put this book to the side. It's not bagged. Yeah, please, guys, drop in the comments. Let me know what books you saw that you would have popped on. I tried to get the prices in there. I hope you guys were able to see them. It is tough sometimes when I'm when I'm flipping through books. Uh, you know, obviously, obviously, I can't stop and show you every book. We'd we'd have a five hour video on our hands um, if I stopped, showed you the book its condition showed you the price and everything like that um, unfortunately i can't do too much of that but i try my best to include the prices and uh, some people have made comments on this on this channel that, that i don't think they've watched too many of my videos um, i try to be as transparent as possible with some of these prices um, there are a lot of guys that uh, don't like to share that information and i completely understand why it's just uh, from my point of view um, I'm trying to give you guys, the viewers, as much information as possible. That's that's definitely a goal of mine. Oh, here's some more cool books coming up. Giant size super villain team up. These were all dollar books too. Um, yeah, I, uh, I I definitely want to make this as transparent as possible. With that being said, like this trip for me at the time of recording this, this was like two or three weeks ago. So I'm not. <laughs> I don't always exactly remember what it is I ended up paying for some of this stuff. I love that, man. That's not, um, this isn't Gorilla Grodd, right? This is something else. Mightiest Beasts of All. Uh, what does this say? Battle Super Gorillas. Interesting. Another pile going here. Yeah, so, so sometimes, you know, sometimes time passes. Like, I have... Uh, priority prioritize other things like my New York Comic Con video I wanted to get that out as soon as possible so as soon as I went to New York Comic Con I wanted to get that video out kind of within that week and unfortunately other things have to get uh, pushed back in the process so this was one of those things this was the same weekend of Comic Con but obviously it's coming out um, weeks later unfortunately it's the it's well, it's the best I can do at the moment. So <laughs> until I come up with a better system, this is as good as it's going to get. So I hope you guys are enjoying it. Um, I certainly enjoy giving you guys the full experience, giving you the raw footage. Um, I really don't cut out too many of the juicy parts. I mean, I try to get all the juicy stuff on camera and so, and then tell you about it and give you my opinion on it. So definitely enjoy doing that. Um, one thing I put in the beginning of the video, I'll remind some of you guys now in case you missed it is that every Monday night, kind of from here on out, at least for the time being, I'm, I'm not going to make a 10-year commitment to this, but um, me and Mark and others, because well, I'm sure we'll have others, um, Greg or Dolph, any, any uh, regular uh, 
supporters of the channel and and just friends of mine um we're gonna be doing live monday nights uh 7 p.m eastern time that's kind of roughly 6 30 to 7 and uh we'll go on for like about an hour we're not gonna make it too too long um i have things that i do uh, also in my life so you know we're not gonna make it too too long but we definitely want to make it uh, a fun kind of hour hour and a half interaction session i think the last one we did ran for exactly an hour um and last time was the first time we did it, and it was kind of rough, it was kind of raw, but it was really good. It was really fun. So um, this time we have a QA and a going. Um, any questions that you guys have for me or for the channel or for the hobby or for anything, uh, you guys can drop them in the comment section, and we'll answer them live. We'll, answer, we'll go live in person. You guys can get the, the raw, real, unscripted answers. Um, and this is the last book that we ended up buying. It, for me, this is one of my favorite books of all time. Um, it's one of the books that I told dad to buy because it was $7. It's in really nice condition and it's one of my favorite books of all time because it's one of the first comic books that my dad ever read to me that really, uh, you know, stuck in my mind and, uh, basically in this episode, uh, and it's one of my favorite characters as, as a consequence is the champion, um, who, you know, he's not talked about too much in, in the MCU or anything like that, if at all. But he's one of uh, these eternal beings and all these strong guys, Thor, Colossus, Hulk, they all try to go fight him. But the rule is, is that you have to fight fairly in a, in a boxing arena. So Thor, you can't use your hammer in a boxing arena. Hulk, his savage brutality couldn't handle the, the intricacies of boxing, the technique. But the thing is a world-class used to be a world-class boxer before he had his accident and so he goes toe to toe with the champion i believe he loses um but it was a, an epic epic fight and uh it was a great comic so I, I, anytime i see this book i pull it out because i just love looking at it it's it's great 70s artwork um but this book does hold near and dear to my heart because it is one of my favorite comics um so that's it that was our whole trip, and you could see no shortage of stuff here. Uh, plenty of stuff, plenty of money was flying. Um, and this is only half of it. We got, we do have another half to the video uh, next week when we, I'll, I'll put it out. We're heading to, I believe the place was called Panther Comics. I don't remember the town. I'll get you all the details in the next video. Uh, remember to tune in Monday nights because I'll, I'll be doing that. I do have a couple little short videos coming out also. Um, I did buy uh, some really cool stuff. Uh, on eBay, so I'll show you guys that in a, in a bit. And um, yeah, it was really fun, really fun doing this trip. Greg, huge shout out to you for the the little gift package plus the whole idea. This this whole video was Greg's idea, so uh, he gets full credit for it. I'm just I'm just relaying the message right now. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoy. I'll see you in the next one in part two. Hope to see you Monday night. Tune in and good night, goodbye. See ya.